welcome to Reach That Page Money Talks, the show where we bring you news and reviews about money and the financial markets. I am your host, Axel Rose, and this will be our topic for today's video. Have you ever felt that 2020 is a wasted year? For the last few months, we have been told that we need to reinvent ourselves by pivoting whatever we are doing to online. I have found that the last 20 years or so, this trend to watch digitalization has actually enabled individuals like me to trip from practically anywhere in the world with just a laptop and an internet connection. My name is Daniel Ang and I've been trading financial markets for the last 35 years. COVID-19 has been very disruptive so far. But I found that the last few months has been my most productive yet. I spent the stay at home period to finally finish writing my book, The Accidental Trader. This goes to show that we have it in all of us to turn adversity into opportunity. Now more than ever, we need new skill set to survive the coming years, if not decades. If I say the coming years will be very challenging, it is an understatement. COVID-19 is a wake up call. There is no time to waste, now is the time. This book is available at all major bookstores and I encourage you to go grab a copy. If these books can be an inspiration to you, it would have achieved my objective. Remember, success is the formula, so is making money. Good morning, uh, sorry, good afternoon. Uh, today is Wednesday, April 26th. The time right now is three minutes past noon. And uh, let's do a bit of a recap on what happened overnight you know, uh, uh, in New York trading. We can see for the first time uh, in seven trading days, we can see the market actually started to give us a direction. Uh, yesterday, of course, we can see from the chart here, this is the four hours time frame and the Dow Jones, the Dow Jones actually came off uh, on the back of uh, some very disappointing earning reports. And uh, of course, the consumer confidence numbers also did not give the market any kind of uh, confidence in the marketplace. And that caused the market to actually came off uh, on the relative basis a little bit sharp compared to what happened over the last seven trading days. So we can see the lowest traded last night was 33,525.4 uh, last night. So this is by far the most obvious uh, directional uh, pull so far. But I have mentioned all this while that the nearest support is probably lying somewhere around 33,275.6. And if this market cannot hold, the next technical level, what we call a, uh, 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 what we call a retracement extension, uh, is probably, may probably see the price move back to 33,000 levels. So this is the bracket of prices between 32,967.2 uh, to 33,085. So this bracket of prices may provide some kind of technical support although there's no obvious support uh, anywhere near the chart point okay but this is just a retracement extension uh, ex uh, expectation so we'll see what happens as the market comes closer to 33,275 which is this nearest support over in the S&P 500 we can see that uh, we also saw the market testing the most nearest significant support which I mentioned all this while at 4,070 4072 okay more sorry it's 4069.8 so it did not quite actually but it's basically right now sitting on it so the fact that the market actually stopped falling uh yesterday uh is possibly proof that the market actually respect this level but in the event if the market should continue to trade below this level uh the next technical ex uh, uh retracement extension point is at 4032 to 4046 levels which are, are listed here so ideally we want to see the market stabilize here and cause the markets to rebound one more time but i say uh the upside potential is actually quite limited so we will have to see how the market reacts if the market goes deep below this level obviously something else is happening we will then uh, take another look in the NASDAQ the NASDAQ actually suffered the most decline last night it, uh, close uh, it actually fell close to two uh, percent relative to what the S&P and the Dow Jones has actually experienced overnight so we can see there was an attempt to actually uh, trade beyond the uh, April high of 
13,204, uh, failed at 13,196, and then see market has come down. But so far, it is corrective because it's three wave, and the nearest support is again at 12,518. Okay, so this level is nowhere near close to where the last, uh, where the market last traded. So if the market cannot hold here, technically speaking, we may see prices, uh, dipping a little bit lower to 12,255 to 12,355 within this 100 point range. Hopefully, the market can stabilize and see and, uh, perhaps uh, uh, encourage another run up in prices. We will have to see whether this is going to be the case. And over the Nikkei yesterday, we have a marginal high. Now on last Friday, we have a marginal high at 28,778. And I mentioned that this is possibly a reversal pattern. You can see this is a long legged shadow doji, but the market actually attempt one more high and just to go seeking for stops and couldn't find stops anywhere above this level. The highest we traded was 28,806.7. And then it closed marginally high, but because of Wall Street week closing this morning, it gapped down and has been trading at the lower end of the range. Now this could possibly mark the reversal point in which the market actually picked at 28,806.7. And if the case, if this is the case, I think the market has the potential to actually continue to decline. Okay. All the way to 27, uh, 26,850 levels at the minimum. So we will see what actually happens as the market unfolds over time. Over in Hong Kong, we can see Hong Kong prices actually sit on this nearby support of 19,509. Uh, the lowest traded so far this morning at midday 19,520. And we have a bit of a uh, reaction here. Now we will see whether we will have to see whether by the end of the day, the market can actually rebound off this chart point. Okay. If it fail to, then of course, uh, the, the next level to, uh, to hold this market will be 18,829. Over in uh, mainland China, we can see the market actually breached momentarily the much low of 3,935 with a low of 3,927, I believe, 9, 925. Okay, so it, it took out the market by uh, something like uh, 13 points and then we then it rebounded. Okay, but we're only halfway through the day session. We'll see later in the afternoon whether this uh, index here can actually hold. Obviously, this is the CSI 300, a major Chinese equity index. Okay, over in energy markets, we can see the energy slip back or, uh, from overnight high of $79.14 to trade to a new low uh, for this series uh, at $76.49. Now, obviously, this market down is doing these retracements, but has it damaged the overall rally in this market from $64.33? Not necessarily. I have been uh, highlighting the possibility the market may actually slip back to 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 and to uh, entirely close up this gap that we saw on April the 1st uh, and this level is at $75.68. So if this is the case, maybe the market has a little bit more room to go, uh, maybe another less than one, $1 left. Okay, then we'll see whether the market can actually hold here. Now in, in the uh, immediate outlook, if this is the low for this series, then the upside uh, potential will be at $80. So $80 is going to be the immediate barrier to uh, for this market to actually cross over. If we cannot cross over, then possibly we may see another leg down, okay? Uh, the one that's actually holding the market is this thing called the natural gas. Natural gas has uh, popped up this morning uh, to $2.40, which is the highest it has, been, it has traded since the market bottoms out at $1.95, okay? So this is working out to be a very nice, but potentially three wave uh, rally. If this is the case, the middle target is $2.58 to $2.68. So anyways, uh, if this thing continue to extend higher, this is going to be the immediate uh, bracket of prices, which may actually hot this one, okay? Over in uh, gold itself, we can see gold market is still struggling. Uh, the market has actually attempted to rally a little bit. Uh, the top side, possibly because this is a three wave uh, a corrective rally and you can see that it is struggling a little bit and if this is the case if market can somehow uh, wriggle all the way to two thousand and nine dollars to two thousand and fifteen dollars that area could be an area of selling opportunity because i think the decline from two thousand forty eight dollars and eighty cents it doesn't look complete to me it may actually do a a larger three way to actually target 1932 to as low as $1,914. So this is the potential. If you sell somewhere here, let's see whether what's a high here that we can see. Worst case, you put your stock above $2,050. If you have a, a little bit of a higher risk appetite, then we, you can consider doing that. I may actually want to do that because I think this corrective pattern is quite clear to me. 
uh, there's no momentum on the upside. So if the market has no momentum to go upside, it struggle, and then we have a reversal pattern within this bracket of prices here, that will be my signal to go in and sell this market. But I want to do half the size of my regular trading size just to be uh, on the safe side because this bullish momentum that we see in the gold market over a long term is still very much intact. Uh, it's still very much alive. So the whole thing is a trading counter trend here. Now over in the silver market, we also saw the market actually go lower to $24.50 before it rebounded. Again, this rebound looks like it has no momentum. If it struggled all the way to $25.30 to, uh, to $0.48, I think this could be an area of opportunity because over the last uh, uh, few trading days, you can see that this area has been an area that it cannot surmount. Okay, so if the market somehow str uh, struggle all the way there. This could be a great area to position a short. But again, like I said, gold, uh, silver has been outperforming gold, meaning uh, the rally in silver is a lot more persistent than the rally in gold. So maybe to sell, uh, gold will be a better candidate compared to silver. Okay. Now in the dollar itself, we can see the dollar has been trying to go up this morning. Uh, it went up to a high of 101.68 from a low of 101.93. Now this pullback here was a little bit deeper than I like, but 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 still it is a pullback because it sits at the 61.8% of the rally from 100.42 to 101.94. So now the market has already bottomed up at 100.93. We can take a three wave extension. Uh, if this market at the bare minimum extend higher in a corrective pattern, then the target will be somewhere around 102.45 to 102.92, uh, 82. So this could be an area in which you can aim for. I'm already long, so basically I'm going to look to pare down my position. I have quite a bit of a long position in dollar index, uh, not the best of thing because I started buying dollar index quite some while ago, but I do add some more at the bottom. So I want to see if I can average it out and get out uh, with my shirt intact. <laughs> okay, now sterling. Uh, sterling has also not been trading very aggressively. You can see the market actually come back down from 125.07 all the way to 124.86 overnight. And uh, if the market do rebound, I think market can actually attempt 124.30 to 124.50 levels. But again, there is hardly any other opportunity uh, in sterling. So if you can avoid doing anything in sterling, uh, then uh, avoid. But if you want to trade knowing that the 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 opportunity is not fantastic the risk reward doesn't make sense to me so just observe do not try to get into this market for the time being okay uh the one that may actually be a little bit that may provide a little bit more incentive to actually trade is actually the euro versus the dollar now the euro went up to a 110.67 this round and then come back down if today we have a bit of a rebound go back to 110 to 110 15 uh, then this area could provide some kind of opportunity because eventually i do believe this uh black color line that i draw in as as a near-term support line may actually be breached if it breached then obviously the market may be targeting 108 30 immediately and if this level cannot hold my long-term target is 105 15 okay this is uh the much low okay now Aussie does not provide much of trading opportunity. It has already fallen a lot deeper than what I thought it would. Okay, we are, initially I thought it's going to be a three wave, but yes, punched through the three wave equality move, and now it's it's heading straight for the uh, my target all the while, which is zero point six five six five. Okay, so this sales by six five six five is actually the low traded here. Okay, uh, so you can see over here. Okay, now in dollar yen, it is also struggling. Uh, in a very corrective rally. So you can see the bottom here, one, 129.64. It struggled all the way in a uh, multiple three wave uh, to 135.14 before it slides back. Now, th this this pullback from 135.14 is also corrective looking. So if today we get another rally attempt, maybe the top side is 134 to 134.35. And uh, let's see what happens. If the market can actually break out of this rising channel here, then I think there's a very good chance it will target 129.65. Okay, uh, which is still my long, uh, my medium to long term target here for this move. Uh, over in dollar Canadian, we have a very persistent rally. It looks like at this point that it is still trying to edge higher. Uh, we have a this morning high we have one thirty thirty six uh, 40, 48, Okay, and this market looks like it wants to extend higher. There is no more barrier in between all the way until one thirty eight. Uh, so there is a possibility the market will just continue to chart higher. But if we get a pullback, if Okay, not very not very high probability for now. But if we do get a pullback, uh, maybe 134.75 to 135.15 is gonna be where you can pick up some long position. So otherwise there is no near-term entry for you uh, to actually engage this market. Now over in Bitcoin, Bitcoin has a bit of a push this morning, surprisingly. Okay, 
earlier on, I did uh, over the, the last few update, I've been telling her there's a possibility it looks like it's going to unfold in a five wave pattern. So this could be part of the fourth wave, but for this to be a fourth wave, it must not overlap this $29, uh, 29,122, okay? 29,122 represents the bottom of the wave one. So in a, a classical five wave uh, decline, in which this one may look like be, to be the case, then it must not overlap the bottom of wave one. So the key area to watch will be $29, uh, 29,122. However, as a market punch higher, uh, the retracement point in which I think the market will come under some kind of pressure, uh, will be at 28,530 to 29,000. So again, we are very, very close to an area in which possibly we may see selling interest uh, re-emerge. Okay, we'll see what happened. I'm basically long. Uh, so right now I'm trying to get out of my long position. Uh, hopefully the market can go a little bit higher into this bracket of prices for me to get out of my long position. Okay, it is very, very near to my entry levels. So maybe I hope to get out with no loss. And uh, this is the best I can hope for now. Okay, in the meantime, Okay, tomorrow I will be in Kuala Lumpur for uh for the weekend. Uh, I'm going there to receive an award, and uh, tomorrow update will be a little bit late, possibly upon my check-in into my hotel in Kuala Lumpur uh, afternoon. Okay, so tomorrow update will be a little bit late. So, in the meantime, take care and be safe. Bye bye. And that's our video for today. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit the Rich Dad PH Facebook page. Once again, my name is Axel Rose. Thank you for watching.